All right, so that's some alignment and some styling. So another thing that you might be wondering, uh, well, first let me go ahead and demonstrate this, and then you might actually start wondering how it actually works. So so you might think that when you go to uh, put this on a web page, so I have hello there on one line, and then I have some empty space here as we go down to some new lines, and then welcome to my web page appears on the next line. Excuse me. And I'll go ahead and save this and show you what the result of this is going to be. You refresh the page, you can see it all ended up on one line. So now you might be wondering, how do I get lines? How do I get separate lines? How do I get the text to go down to the next line on a web page? And the way you accomplish that is to use what's referred to as the break tag which is just that, less than symbol, br, and then greater than symbol. And basically, you can sort of think of this as the equivalent of Python's backslash n. Wherever Python finds the backslash n, it means go down to the next line and continue writing the text from there. Uh, you can sort of think of it like that. Wherever your browser finds the br tag or the break tag, it means go down to the next line and then continue writing out the text. So just to show you what that would actually look like. And also one thing about the break tag is, is it doesn't have a closing tag. It's just a simple, this right here just means go down to the next line. There's no real reason to close it off. But just to show you what that actually looks like, you can see now, welcome to my page, now appears on its own line. If I want some extra spacing, I can add more break tags. You can see now it adds some extra spacing. And if I want to get really silly with this, there's no limit to how many break tags you can put in at once or have in your web page at all. So here I'm going to uh, start copying and pasting some stuff here. And this thing is really picky sometimes. Sometimes the my control key does not want to work. Yeah, my control key for some reason is not acting up, or is not behaving itself right now. So yeah, that's the keyboard shortcut. Okay, for some reason it's not copying in the first place. Oh, I think I see why. There we go. There we go. So yeah, let's just put a bunch of break tags in there for no reason at all. Aaron to show you what this would actually look like. And you'd see, yeah, that's uh, kind of not very uh, practical, but if you want to have some fun with this, then you can put in as many break tags as you want and see how far down the web page you can get some text to appear. But uh, yeah, copy and pasting in GNE can get kind of uh, kind of uh, not fun. And I just demonstrated something here by accident. So if you want to minimize stuff within uh, tags, you can hit these little uh, squares that have hyphens in them. That way, if you end up building a really large web page, then you can hide bits of text or uh, tags that you're not interested in looking at. And that makes it a little bit more readable. And then to get that back, so you see, if something's hidden, it turns uh, from a minus sign to a plus sign, and you can just simply click that to uh, toggle the displaying of what's in between those two particular tags. And I'll go ahead and go back to the edit menu. So to copy something, it's control C, and then to paste something in Genie, it's control V. So basically the same keyboard shortcut that it is for Windows. And for some reason on a Mac, if you do Command C, you can't do Command V to paste. Don't ask me why, but that's just the way X Quartz is set up. So copy and pasting to copy is Control V and or excuse me, to copy is Control C, to paste is to Control V, and to cut is Control X. So basically the same keyboard shortcuts that show up on Windows. And another thing that I'll go ahead and demonstrate is the idea of a header tag, which uses uh, this lowercase h followed by a number. This number is between one and six. If you try to do something higher than six, then it will just default back to six if I remember correctly. So a uh, header tag basically allows you to make text larger or to tell the web page where specific subsections on your web page are located. So I'll just say example header, and then I'll take this down a couple lines and then say some text. And then again, everything between the H1 tag here, that is going to be part of the header. And you'll see what this actually looks like when I go to refresh the page. You can see, displayed it, a little bit larger text. And then some text, which was not in between the H1 tags, is just displayed normally. If I want to put in a 6 here, which is the largest value you can put in, 
what's kind of interesting about this is you put in larger numerical values, you actually get a smaller header. So you can see this text is actually smaller than the text that I have down here. And like I said, if you try to put anything larger in, say H7, uh, it actually is not even going to register that. So this tag is not going to be recognized by the browser. So uh, numbers through one and six, those are what you're limited to when you're putting in headers. All right, another thing that I'll go ahead and demonstrate in this segment is how to change the font and the size of the font. So we kind of looked at how to change the size of the font with the header, but you don't want to use the header tags too much because those actually do have a specific functionality to them. But by default, uh, all the fonts that you get on a web page, so any web page at all, if there's no font specified, it'll be displayed as Times New Roman 12 point font. But you can change the font to uh, something else. Say I were to do, instead of, instead of Times New Roman, I wanted, I'll just go ahead and use Arial an as an example. So that makes use of the font tag. And then after that, you'll type face equals and then quotation marks. And then inside the quotation marks, that's the name of the font that you want to use. And then again, everything in between the font tag, that's what's going to be converted to Arial. So, so in between the two font tags, it'll print out this X is Arial. And if I go ahead and save that, you can see this font does look a little bit different than the Times New Roman font. And just to demonstrate how this is in fact different, Since this text does not appear in between the two font tags, it is not the font tags will not take effect to this text. So this will still be Times New Roman. You can see they are in fact a little bit different. And another thing you can include inside of the font tag is a size value, which allows you to change the size of the of the text itself. And six is the largest value that you can put in here, just like with the header tag. And I'll just show you what this looks like. See, it makes the text a lot smaller. And then if you put the smallest value of size in there, which is one, then you might need a microscope to actually read the text in here. And if you want to zoom in on a web page, uh, the keyboard shortcut for that on a Mac, at least, is Command equal sign or Command plus. You can see you can actually zoom in here. So if you run into a web page that's got really small text and you can zoom in onto the text, there are ways to do that. but Generally, it's a good idea to make sure the text is in fact readable. That way, you're, someone viewing your web page doesn't need a microscope to actually read the text. So just sort of a good rule of thumb. Usually, the smallest value that you want to put in for the size is two. That's like a bare minimum. Anything smaller than that is going to be really hard for a user to look at. And then I can also, there's also as long as your as long as your computer knows or has a reference for the font, there's really no limit that, to what you can put in here. But uh, some fonts are more universal than others, like Helvetica, Arial, Times New Roman. Those are all pretty universal. Another one that's pretty universal is Microsoft Sans Serif. In fact, that's generally considered the gold standard when it comes to professional web pages is Microsoft Sans Serif, which pretty much looks the exact same as Arial. There's really not much difference between the two of them. But uh, that's pretty much the professional standard for web pages. Most everything is Microsoft Sans Serif uh, or Arial or something to that effect. Now, if you've ever gone through and looked at some of the various fonts on a word processor, you know that there are some really fancy fonts in there, which may or may not be appropriate for a professional setting, especially something like webdings or wingdings, which has all have all those weird symbols in it. I mean, you, there's nothing to stop you from putting those on your web page, but it might be hard for a user to figure out what you're trying to say if you're using weird symbols like that. So just something to keep in mind, a uh, sensible choice of font sort of depends on what you're uh, what your end goal is, uh, whether it's something professional or if it's something more informal. But uh, on this homework assignment that you have, which is to sort of create a web page of your own, I do encourage you to be as creative as possible, as creative as you want to be, because this is the only assignment that gives you a really wide latitude in terms of creativity. But uh, yeah, if you want to have fun with it, then by all means go for it, because this is going to be the only assignment that really gives you a lot of creative latitude uh, when it comes to completing the assignment. So I think that'll wrap it up for this segment. And the next segment will sort of continue on this topic, how to change the various styling of text. And that will also include introducing some other concepts that we'll need to know in order to actually do that. So with that, I will see you all in the next segment.